You are now tuned into Flyroy, the trend setter. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Welcome everyone, if everybody can have a seat. Good afternoon, I'm Dana Pesavento and I'm the Associate Dean of Nursing at the Aurora Campus. And I just want to welcome all of you to Rasmussen University School of Nursing pinning ceremony for our June graduates 2023. The pinning ceremony has been a tradition when nurses welcome graduates into the nursing profession. This ceremony celebrates the rite of passage from student to nurse. Today, our graduates will receive a pin that represents Rasmussen University School of Nursing. This pin is unique to our school and its design represents our school colors. The symbolism behind the nursing pin is that our graduates have met the requirement for their education and have committed themselves to the nursing profession. The journey through nursing school can be difficult sometimes and often stressful.
Today, we celebrate our graduates and acknowledge that journey and celebrate successful completion of this part of their nursing education. We would like to take a moment and thank those who have been an integral part of this journey. First of all, we would like to recognize our campus teams. This all started with our admissions advisors and continued with our support specialists, our clinical coordinator, student advisors, campus executive directors, and our career services team who will continue to work with our graduates as they transition into their professional role. Next, we would like to recognize our nursing administrative coordinator, Jenny Schlomas, who continually supports the nursing deans and our campus teams. We want to recognize our nursing faculty and thank them for their guidance and commitment to each one of our students. At this time, I'd like our faculty to stand. Let's give them a round of applause. We can't say thank you enough to our faculty. And lastly, we would like to thank all of you who are here with us today, family and friends, who have supported our graduates to get to this part of their journey. Without your love and support, we know they could not have done this. And with that, I want to remind our graduates their journey is not quite done. There is one more thing they must do, and that will still require studying and time away from the people they love the most. But with your continued support, they will conquer the NCLEX. At this time, I would like to present a message from our area dean, Dr. Lydia Falbo, who is actually representing the university in Mexico right now. Uh, so she pre-recorded a speech for you. I'm Dr. Paul, area dean of nursing for Illinois, and I wanted to send you a video to tell you how proud I am of each and every one of you that you've made it. Yay, I'm so excited. I'm sorry I'm not able to be there with you today. I am actually at the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities Leadership Conference in Mexico, but I wanted to be sure that I sent you a message. All of your hard work has paid off. Your motivation and everything you did to get to this point. I know there were very hard times that you wanted to quit, but you did it and you're here. I want to leave you with a quote from Dr. Seuss. It's my favorite quote from, the, from all the places you'll go. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know, and you are the one who will decide where to go. Congratulations to all of you. Now go past that end class. We know you can do it. At this time, I would like to invite our graduate speakers to the podium to provide their reflection on this exciting time. We have David Zilk from Aurora and Carly Derzinski from Romeoville. Come on up. Taking a deep breath. So let's inhale and exhale. See what I did there? <laughs> I'm already utilizing my nursing interventions. There are several nanodiagnoses that we could use for nursing school. 
I would like to thank all the family and support system in this room, as well as the ones outside of here. Let me tell y'all right now, it takes an army to accomplish what we all just did. All of those days and nights, going through our own personal issues, but still having to have that discussion in by midnight on Tuesday night was worth it. I would like to take this time to applaud our support systems. Thank you for everything y'all have done or put up with. I know we were probably not the most favorite people to be around at times, but thank you for sticking it out. We know y'all can't pronounce the words correctly when testing us, but who's saying the doctors are gonna be able to in the real world? Now a little bit about me, I had a lot happen throughout this program. I remember towards the end of PN2, which was the one before this one, I went on a routine dermatology checkup. See, my mom had melanoma that attached to her lymph nodes, therefore I go routinely. This year I was like, nursing school tells me that I may have to have this looked at, so I told them to remove it. They told me it was nothing. Less than a week later, I had a call that I had to return as soon as possible. They did a second biopsy and then a third. They were talking about skin grafts and all kinds of stuff, but they couldn't just get it removed. My mom was beside me the entire time. The doctor came in and said they got it all. My only thought was, what if I didn't know what I learned from nursing school? What if I would have agreed and said, okay, it's just a birthmark? The bottom line is, we have absorbed an abundant amount of knowledge. We just don't realize it. As most of you know, I worked throughout this program. I'm sure my professors do. There were days I came in looking like I hadn't slept in days. Well, that's because I hadn't. I would call my mom to talk to me about absolute nonsense my entire ride home because I hadn't slept in 60 plus hours. She never once doubted me or told me to stop. In fact, she offered to drive me around. My point is, every cohort I have been in, there have been girls that I mentioned my busy schedule to, and it was nothing for them to ask me what I drive. And every morning, if I was in my vehicle and I was still running at school or clinical, they knew I was passed out. They would call, text, or even knock on the door. Thank you, everyone, for that, especially Marissa. I remember my first week back after two semesters off and taking that darn simplex on the very first day of school. It was not good. I got in my car and I messaged Professor Schulte and I said, I didn't pass, should I just drop? Her response, I'll never forget it. She said, you've been gone a while, calm down, which was her basic reaction when I tested her. She was also the first person to test me congratulations and that she never doubted me. Thank you. I have one quote before I stop talking about myself. Success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Enough about me and let's get to the main event. All of y'all deserve this. You have worked hard, you have spent a ridiculous amount of time earning this. Your sweat and tears have finally amounted to success. Oh, and you thought the unpaid shifts were over? Welcome to the club or if I have this, I've had this. Can you look at this? All of us in this room will forever be connected. We accomplished something many would have given up on. We stuck it out when others would have thrown the towel. We can achieve anything we set our minds to and this accomplishment proves it. You don't have to see the whole staircase to take the first step. And baby, we're at the top. Only one more threshold to go. I hope y'all do two things tonight. Celebrate with whoever you feel you want to celebrate with and know you can and will pass the NCLEX. I'll leave y'all with this funny joke. How many nurses does it take to screw in a light bulb? None, it's delegated. We have a cohort <laughs> of June 2023. So first, on behalf of all of us, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to our families, our friends, and our loved ones. Without you, many of us may not be in this room today. In some way, you have all loved us, inspired us, and encouraged us through all the ups and downs of this program. Thank you to the faculty, yes, even faculty, uh, for pushing us to be the best that we can be. There were many times that most of us probably thought that we may not make it. Like when we were told that we had to complete a 15 minute head to toe assessment video. <laughs> or when we first learned that we were going to have a dose calc quiz during the first week of every class throughout the entire program. Oh, and we had to get 100% on every 
One of them? Or how about after our first ATI exam? <laughs> you can see what the most worst one was. Uh, and then again, probably after our second farm exam. Or lastly, maybe even, uh, maybe even as recent as, dare I mention it, after our third maternal exam. <laughs> For those of you that may not know, what we all just subjected ourselves to, by choice, mind you, was an accelerated nursing program. So on top of the heavy, and at times insane, amount of material that we had to learn, a lot was thrown at us in the past 18 months, from curriculum changes to schedule changes and everything in between. This program and everything that accompanied it would have been challenging enough if we had 100% of our time to dedicate towards our learning and our schoolwork. But unfortunately, we're all adults now. We have families, jobs, responsibilities, and although maybe not as much over the last year and a half, we have lives. But no matter how many times we were knocked down or thrown a curveball, we got back up. We were resilient, we worked even harder, and we persevered. We persevered because we all came together. We had one goal in mind and one dream. We learned that one of the most important roles of a nurse is to be an advocate for our patients. I'm confident that each and every one of you is gonna be an amazing nurse. Why? Because at some point along the way to getting here today, you all advocated for each other. I mean, let's be honest. Over the last almost two years, we've probably spent more time with each other than we did with our own families. I see a lot of heads nodding up and down. So it should be no surprise that we built some lifelong friendships along the way. There were a lot of laughs, a lot of tears. Yeah, you know who you are. A lot of heartache, a lot of joy, and a lot of stress, anxiety, fear, and at times, hopelessness. Although there is one thing that there was not a lot of, sleep. We truly needed each other these past 18 months, and that is why our bond is so strong. Each exam, each clinical day, each ATI test was an obstacle we overcame together. I, for one, could not have done it without you guys. And for that, I will be forever grateful. I know I'm not alone in saying that I hope our cohort, I got that word right for a change, remains in touch with each other and continues to support each other, especially in the beginning, when we come home that very first time covered in bodily fluids. As nurses, we hold the hands of the newly born and of those who are taking their last breaths on earth. We not only care for the patient, but their family as well. We diagnose and assess, even when we're not at work. So, like Carly said, family be prepared. Or, like she said, is it us that she be prepared for all the questions, like what is this? What should I do? Uh, Tylenol or Advil, you know? So, I don't know which one should be prepared more. Uh, but most importantly, we love, and we love hard. So family, loved ones, we want to thank you in advance for listening, even if you don't fully understand, and for reminding us that we did the best that we could for that one patient, and for reminding us of the wonderful care that we give and comfort that we bring to all of our patients and their families each and every shift. To my fellow graduates and soon-to-be registered nurses, the truth is, going through the valleys help us appreciate the mountaintops. So in spite of all the emotional and physical challenges that this microphone is presenting, uh, but also that this profession presents, or perhaps because of them, it truly is an honor to be a nurse. So I'm gonna leave you with a quote that I used in the first big presentation I ever had to give. I won't say exactly when that was, but let's just say it was more than a few years ago. So Ele Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the future belongs to those who believe 
and the beauty of their dreams. Well, friends, today is our dream, and our future starts today. Congratulations, now let's go past that end class. Thank you, David and Carly. We appreciate your contribution to this cohort of June 2023. Something that we are doing a little bit different this time around is our students have nominated faculty speakers. So I would like to introduce our two faculty speakers, Anita Massey and Jamie Hughes, to offer some support of David Foster Wallace said in his book, Infinite Jest, everything I've ever let go of has claw marks on it. Think about that. Everything I've ever let go of has claw marks on it. This is kind of common with Wallace in his writing, referring to hands as claws. It's intentionally dehumanizing, shifting how we interact with the world in a more monstrous and animalistic way. There's a certain savagery about the quote. Everything I've ever let go of has claw marks on it. It's supposed to evoke this quiet discomfort in the reader. Claw marks doesn't necessarily elicit something warm and fuzzy. It did something different for me, though. When I read it, it drove me and pushed me during a period of my life when I was struggling to find that motivation and drive. I was in nursing school, but I still felt lost and overwhelmed and overall disgruntled something I'm sure none of you can relate to. I actually was so jaded that I skipped my own pinning. Can you believe that? I skipped my own pinning at the University of Illinois, Chicago. I voluntarily chose to avoid one of the most important days in our nursing education, if not the most important. And when I say that I regret that decision, I mean that I think about it still to this day I have called and emailed higher ups at UIC to see if there's any way that I could get the pin in reverse. <laughs> um, I've looked to buy one online as if any of my classmates would sell something so precious. Not to mention, is it even worth something to anyone else? I guess it is because what I wouldn't give to be able to wear that pin on my lapel. Everything I've ever let go of has claw marks on it. I couldn't let it go. I was holding on to this idea of a pin so tightly, and I really wasn't sure why. It wasn't graduation. I still received my diploma, the whole ceremony, all the regalia, the pictures, the tossing of the caps. I was there for it all. Why was this something I couldn't loosen my claws on? Why was my grip so tight? Did you know that the pinning of the nurse has roots derived from 12th century knights given the Maltese cross for the work that they did in aiding the sick and infirmed? An honor so prestigious, it was the base for the award that Florence Nightingale received in the 1860s for her efforts during the Crimean War. She then took this symbol and awarded it to her best pupils. And the rest is history. We've kind of adapted it over the years, um, these pins with the colors of our alma mater, but the symbolism is still the same. So imagine my dismay when I realized I had forfeited that opportunity to gain a pin into what is, in my opinion, one of the most prestigious professions in the world. A profession with a long-standing respectable history to which saving lives is part of their everyday job description. This has plagued me for years. And then I received an email from Dean Falvo stating that I had been voted to speak at pinning by the students. You're kidding me. I hate public speaking. 
It was gone, that hole that I felt. One, because you all knew I had a crippling fear of public speaking, but also because I knew that today was so important and so elite that I would have traded my own pinning experience just to be able to appreciate the value of being here with you today. I can't thank you all enough for allowing me to be a part of that. And so with that I say, there will be days as a new nurse when you will want to quit, when you will question your choices and you will cry the entire ride home or in the locker room at the hospital. You will make mistakes and mistakes in our industry cost people their lives. You will feel beaten. You will question your abilities. You will feel intimately close with failure. Today isn't the beginning of Easy Street. Today you join an esteemed group of individuals whose quest for betterment never ceases, a group so fierce even seasoned doctors know to heed our presence. Today you join the ranks of individuals who leave lasting marks on the world. Everything I've let go of has claw marks on it. Be fierce, be the embodiment of strength, be bold, question everything, sink your claws into issues that need you to address them, fight for your patients, be the advocates that they deserve, be a force to be reckoned with, do not go unnoticed, dig in and leave claw marks on the medical industry, don't let them forget you because I know I never will. Congratulations, Spring 2023 class. You have arrived and your faculty here at Rasmussen are so very proud of you.
not an easy task. I personally love being an educator and being able to teach students from all different backgrounds and different learning styles. The most rewarding moments as an educator is those special aha moments. That moment when a student is able to put the pieces together and you actually see it happening, where instead of just memorizing facts, they're able to see the whole picture and truly understand those concepts. Our greatest wish as an educator is the success of our students. It may seem like we're trying to torture you with those many assignments that are due each week, but the assignments are designed to help increase understanding. I still remember my students' faces on the first day of lecture when they found out that not only do the assignments have to be handwritten, writing out information like pathos, signs or symptoms, but they also had to include all those nursing interventions. Anybody want to tell me? Do you guys remember what are those three things I had you include for every assignment? Three things you would monitor, do, and teach. <laughs> I hope that's ingrained with all of you now. I am so thankful I'm not able to read minds. Because look at those faces that day. Those thoughts that were directed at me were not very pleasant, I'm sure. <laughs> but believe me, the reason behind all that hard work, which don't forget I had to read all that handwriting too, <laughs> is not only to help increase understanding of complicated concepts, but be able to apply those concepts at the bedside. The goal is to provide safe patient care. Because remember, at the center of it, it's the patient. That patient that is relying on you to provide safe care to them. Students have told me that they can hear my voice in their heads. And I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing to hear my high-pitched voice just running around in your head all the time. <laughs> but there is one thing I hope you guys all do remember. When you've all passed NPLEX in 45 days, on your first attempt, and are all working on the floor as a new grad, if you start to feel overwhelmed, and I guarantee you there are gonna be times when you feel overwhelmed, I want you to take a deep breath and rely on your foundation. Your foundation is that knowledge, everything that you've learned at your time at Rasmussen. Remember again that knowledge empowers. Trust your instincts, trust yourself and what you've learned. You may not realize it, but your foundation is strong. You guys have learned a lot. My wish for all of you as you start your career as registered nurses is to believe in yourself. Realize that nursing is a lifelong learning process. You will never know everything. Treat each patient encounter as a new chance to learn something and never be afraid to ask questions or to ask for help. Graduating from nursing school is not easy as I'm sure all of you guys can attest to, especially while trying to balance all those responsibilities of life. I know you've all worked extremely hard to get here. I'm so proud of you, and I want to say congratulations again, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of your educational journey. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Yes, thank you students for choosing two professors who believe it or not, don't like public speaking. But as I said to Professor Massey, I know you can do it. And now we are on to the reason why you're all here, the presentation of our graduates. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Brian Balick. I'm the campus executive director at the Aurora campus. At this special ceremony for the graduating nursing students, where family and friends share witness, the students get to dedicate their nursing pin to special honorees. Frequently, they dedicate the pin to family members who helped them along their journey, to a close friend, or to the spiritual force that guided them. Please remain seated during this portion of the ceremony. You will have an opportunity to take photos after the ceremony. Graduates, please come forward. In our first set of graduates, we'll be pinned by Professor Lynn Bernard from our Aurora campus.
Danielle Aguilar. Gianna Amato. <laughs> Ashley Barger. Susana Barrios. <laughs> Brittany Becker. Midland Bien. <laughs> Anissa Bochi. Michelle Bogowan. Yeah. Role Boyer. Marcy Butler. <laughs> Wayne Caldwell. Marissa Campbell Sims. <laughs> Izzy Siju. Marcel Dazu Naham. <laughs> our next presenter or pinner for our second set of graduates is Professor Jennifer Cortez from our Romeoville campus. Amanda Donzi. Carly Drzinski.
Christiana E.G. Dina Alaben. Yvonne Federico. Diana Fleming. Gianna Garcia. Alyssa Gomez. Alexis Hentz. Raymond Hill. Joy Adubor. Lindia Joseph. And for our third set of graduates, our next presenter is Professor Nathaniel Tiemann, who will be uh, pinning our graduates. He is from our Romeville campus. <laughs> Laura King. Janice Lambie. Jade LaPapa. Roberta Lincoln. Alicia Logan. <laughs> Cecilia Love. <laughs> Kelly McGee. Jessalyn Marshall. <laughs> Myrna Mayen. <laughs> Friday McElroy. Karina Mendez Aranda.
Amanda Nadler. Ariel Newman. And our next faculty pinner will be Janelle Wig from our Aurora campus. Brittany Northcutt. Bokula Alanrod Wuju. William Pagi. Ivan Parayo. Divine Shimango. <laughs> Janal Patel. Megan Pope. Anastasia Porter. Serenity Qualls. <laughs> Delina Rutherford. Gabriela Soto. Gianna Spitali. Lindsay Stoll. Bridget Sidnar. Esperanza Torres. <laughs> Stacy Torres. Angela Valenti.
Jocelyn Vega. Dulce Villa Rodriguez. Shamir Vincent. Demia Washington. Nicole Winter. Z Wanani. David Zill. <laughs> now I would like to invite our next speaker, Joanna Yalstra, who will share the history of the Florence Nightingale lamp lighting. Hello, everybody. Okay, um, the lamp lighting ceremony represents early nursing and takes us back to the Crimean War in the early 1800s. During this time, Florence Nightingale was said to walk in the dark, damp halls of the soldiers' barracks as she made her rounds with only a lighted lamp to show the way. As a tribute to Florence Nightingale, the lamp has become the iconic symbol of nursing. The lamp will always shine brightly as a symbol of the care and devotion each nurse administers to the sick and injured under their care. At Rasmussen University, we are proud to continue that tradition. The lamp is symbolic for all the wisdom, knowledge, compassion, and caring held by our faculty. Its candle is used as a means to transfer this wisdom from our faculty to our graduating nurses. Each graduate has received a candle as a symbol of their entrance into the profession of nursing. The graduates will hold their candles proudly, lighting the way of competence and confidence instilled by their instructors as they go forward to care for the sick and injured. At this time, will the new graduates please light your candles? into death with dignity, to hold those entrusted to our care with respect, affirm their innate worth, and hold their privacies and confidence, 
to advocate for the health and needs of our patients, respecting their cultural and religious beliefs, to act as leaders in promoting health throughout the communities, to hold in esteem nursing experts, educators, researchers, and scholars who have guided our paths and are welcoming us into the profession, to help strengthen fellow nurses and advance the aims of our nursing profession, to share our knowledge with, encourage, and welcome future nurses. Graduates, please take a seat. I would now like to invite our last speaker, Amber Jean Carlo, to come to the podium for closing remarks. greatest respect and honor from each of us. These graduates had a hunger to learn and a desire to succeed. They have accomplished so much in a very short time and a very accelerated time. They have one more task ahead of them. What is it? Thank you. To accomplish their goal of becoming a nurse. They are equal to that task, but they will need your continued support and encouragement as they begin their final preparation for their national licensure examination. Please understand that just because they have finished their coursework does not mean they can stop preparing. I want to thank the graduates and their families for coming together today to help celebrate our nursing graduates. Congratulations nurses, you have done it. ceremony. We wish you all the best on this new journey in becoming a nurse. Graduates, please stand. To, of the graduating cohort of the June 2023 class of Rasmussen University.